Do you struggle to maintain altitude during cruise? Well, the bad news is you're probably using the trim incorrectly. The good news, we're here to help. In this video, we'll explain exactly how the trim works and how to use it correctly. At the end, we'll also discuss some practical tips that you can start using today in order to make trimming a lot easier. Hello and welcome. My name is Greg. I'm an FAA flight instructor with over 20 years of experience, and I'm the lead instructor at Pilot Institute, the online school where we help you achieve your aviation dreams. Okay, so what is trim on an aircraft? Well, in a nutshell, it's an adjustable surface that applies a force on a control surface like the elevator, for example, in order to keep it in position. Now, this relieves the pilot from needing to apply the force themselves using the control yoke. It works by redirecting the airflow just like the flight control surface itself. The force that is created by the redirected airflow forces the control surface into a specific position. Now, this means that the pilot doesn't have to constantly apply a force on the yoke in order to keep the control surface into a specific position. This is a game changer because it allows the pilot to focus on, well, many other tasks without having to worry about the attitude changing when they reduce or increase pressure on the control yoke by mistake. The trim system can be as complex as a movable trim that's coupled to an autopilot, or it can be as simple as a flat sheet of metal that is bent in place on one side. Now, in either case, the basic idea is the same. Redirect the airflow to place the control surface in position and then keep the airplane in the desired attitude. That's the basic idea of trim, but now let's go ahead and take a look at how it works from a pilot's perspective. Ailerons, elevators, and rudders can all have trim, but the elevator trim is really the most common one. And the most common type of trim system is called a trim tap. It's a small, adjustable surface that's connected to the trailing edge of a larger control surface. Now, the trim tap is operated using cables, pulleys that are usually attached to a mechanical wheel or even a crank that the pilot is going to turn manually. Now, some aircraft have an electrical trim motor that is controlled by a switch on the control yoke or on the control stick. Now, this allows the pilot to push on the switch in order to move the trim tab instead of, you know, manually rotating the trim wheel, for example. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the trim step by step, and then we'll be using the elevator trim tab in the Cessna 172 as an example. First, the pilot is going to move the trim wheel in the cockpit. Now, in this example, the pilot is going to move the trim in the up position when viewed from inside the cockpit. The trim tab, in this case, on the elevator is going to move upward as well. As the trim tab is now exposed to the airflow on the upper surface, then the force of the airflow is going to cause the elevator to move down. What changes in pitch does the downward movement of the elevator create? That's right, a nose down pitch. Now, in this example, the pilot has actually trimmed it in a way that we call nose down. Now, the key point here is that the pilot is not using the trim in order to move the elevator itself. The pilot is keeping the elevator in position by applying a force on the control yoke, and then they adjust the trim so that it applies a force instead. The pilot needs to adjust the trim in order to find the point where they no longer need to push or pull on the control yoke. Now remember, the trim can only keep the elevator in one position. In order to keep the elevator in a different position, the pilot would have to readjust the trim. Now this means that the pilot must adjust the trim anytime that they make a change in attitude, airspeed, power, or configuration like the flaps or the gear. So that was a practical example using the elevator trim, but what about the other control surfaces? Well, first up, the rudder trim. The rudder trim is going to reduce the forces, well, on the rudder pedals that are related to yawing the aircraft. Many general aviation aircraft have a ground adjustable trim tab on the rudder. Now these fixed trim tabs, they're bent in one position, and they apply a force on the rudder in flight. Now, since the pilot can't really adjust it during flight, then that is going to be set in one position for one phase of flight. Now, the pilot or the mechanic usually set the ground adjustable tab for cruise conditions. Now, some aircraft, like the popular trainer, the Piper Warrior, have a rudder tab that can actually be adjusted from the cockpit itself. And we also have L-round trim. These are going to apply a force on the control yoke related to roll. And it's very useful when you have fuel on the left or on the right tank that are not equal. So the unbalanced fuel in this case
space between the two wings is going to cause the aircraft to bank towards the side where there is going to be more fuel. So now you know the theory behind using the trim, but how does it translate into real life? Here's three practical tips for mastering the trim. And the first one is be aware when you need to readjust the trim. Many pilots trim too little, which means that over time they're going to struggle to maintain control of the aircraft. Now remember, any time you make a change in attitude, airspeed, power setting, or the configuration of the aircraft, you need to trim again. But even if you do trim the aircraft when you need to, you need to know if you've trimmed correctly. So that's tip number two, is a simple way of checking your trim setting, and we call that the hands-off test. First, you're going to maintain stable flight at your desired attitude and airspeed. Then you're gradually going to adjust the trim in order to minimize the yoke pressure. Now, when you think you have it right, briefly release the control yoke and well, see if the aircraft changes attitude. Now, if it does change attitude, then you need to readjust the trim. If it doesn't and stays where you wanted it to be, you did it right. Now, there's one more tip that you should keep in mind, and that's the most important one. During final approach, the trim is usually not in the takeoff trim position. Generally, when the aircraft is trimmed for final approach, it's going to be trimmed with the nose up setting compared to takeoff, which means that, well, if you have to go around, applying full power can surprise you with an abrupt pitch up attitude, and then also very heavy flight controls that you're gonna have to push against. Now, be aware of this and then anticipate it. So if you need to go around, make sure that you retrim when you reach a safe climbing altitude. Now, I know trim can be difficult to understand without practical application, and many students only fully understand it once they start using it in the wild. Now, if you're still confused, don't worry, you'll eventually get it. But if you'd like to see how the trim is used in one of our flights, check out this video right here. It's an uncut video of a full flight where you'll see one of our flight instructors using it. All right, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.